Hi everyone and welcome to the last game in this series on Bobby Fischer. Later on this week the candidates tournament is starting and I'm going to follow that for May. This time we're going to look at another fine game from Fischer. It was against the two-time Argentinian national champion and grandmaster Julio Bolboken, who was an international master at the time of this game in 1962 at the Stockholm Interzonal Tournament. Fischer had white and open with e4 after which came c5, the Sicilian defence, which Fischer was an expert in at both sides of the board. Play continued with the book line knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6. The Neudorf variation, widely considered to be the sharpest and most complex and creative opening discovered in chess to date. Fischer elected for the Adams attack with h3. It's named after Weaver Adams. In the notes to the game he adds that the loss of time for Black in playing a6 on his last move may possibly justify the loss of time for White in playing h3. He goes on to say that this variation is specifically directed against the characteristic e5 push of the Neudorf for the Black side. Here Bulbulkan played knight c6, but let's have a look about what Fischer was talking about. If he plays instead e5, now comes knight d e2 and bishop e7. If instead bishop e6, now g4, and best play goes d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5, and bishop g2 with a comfortable edge to white. So bishop e7 g4, it's one of the reasons for h3 to support this push, castles, and now knight g3, threatening knight f5, so g6 prevents the knight from advancing any further, but now comes g5, knight e8 is best move, and now h4 with a powerful attack coming, black has to be careful, for instance if he plays f6 here to challenge these white pawns, now comes bishop c4 check, Best play goes king g7, h5, f takes g5, h takes g6, and white is completely winning with the computer evaluation giving an advantage of four pawns. If h takes g6, for example, now knight h5 check is going to mate in six moves. So there's some nice ideas behind the Adams attack. But anyway, we'll go back to the game continuation. Knight c6 is what Bolboken has just played. And uh, now Fischer continued with g4, which of course, as I said, is one of the reasons behind playing h3 in the opening. And, uh, you know, it gets black under pressure very early in the game, especially if he's going to castle kingside, which is normal in the Sicilian defense. And play continued with the forcing line. Knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and e5, which is another common move in Sicilians. Black has to be careful though. Despite this move gaining central space with tempo because it attacks the queen, it creates a hole in his pawn structure at d5. If white can find an effective way to exploit this, then he's in business. Fischer moved his queen to d3, which protects the e-pawn whilst maintaining the d-file pressure, which is, um, you know, what well, which white usually gets in the Sicilian because later he can castle long and intensify this pressure with a rook on d1. Bolbo can continue development with bishop e7 and Fischer commented here that bishop e6 preparing the d5 advance in order to liquidate black's weak d6 pawn because it's backward on an open file is the more accurate move. Fischer continued on the kingside advance now with g5 and after knight d7, which is the best move, we can see one of the reasons why bishop e6, the move before, is better, because now this knight is blocking the queen's bishop from developing. If black plays instead knight h5, white can follow up with h4 and bishop e2, which is going to cause black some problems. And returning the knight to g8 instead, of course, is bad too, because of the loss of time involved. So knight d7 anyway is what Bolboken played, and now Fischer played 
bishop e3, which allows the g-pawn to drop if black wants it, but in turn, black will lose the d-pawn. However, this is the best chance that black has. It results in a lot of simplification, and white will have a small edge going into the end game. And for Fisher, this was a satisfactory result from the opening. His end game skill was, and still is, considered sublime. Bolboken decided on knight c5, which seems logical because it gains a tempo on the queen, and um, you know there's pressure on the e4 pawn, and that allows the queen's bishop to develop. But Fisher considered it a bad move, given the variation I just mentioned as best. It goes bishop takes g5, bishop takes g5, queen takes g5, queen takes d6, and best play goes queen e7, queen takes e7, king takes e7, knight d5 check, king f8, and white castles long with better endgame chances. So knight c5 anyway from Bob Olken, and uh, Fisher just moves his queen to d2, um, keeping defense on the g5 pawn. So now bishop e6, which guards this weak d5 square, and both sides castled. And with opposite sides castling, we can expect a sharp game to follow with pawn storms on both sides of the board. Fisher continued with f3, which he gave no, e no notes on. Presumably he's bolstering his e4 pawn, which is a target for black in the Sicilian, and allowing his queen to come to the king's side, um, you know, if the opportunity presents itself to attack. But Balkan continued with rook c8, which takes control of the semi-open file, which is one of black's big positional strong points in Sicilian setups. And Fisher now played the apparently time losing move King B1, which given the nature of the position, with Tempai being crucially important with some sharp tactics to come and a soon opening game. He noted here that amateurs are often puzzled by this apparent loss of time, and pointed out that it's a handy defensive move, getting out of the line of sight of the rook on C eight of his kings on C one which is a pin that can become annoying after a later b5 and b4. So Bolboken continued with knight d7 because the knight wasn't doing that much on c5 although it's a reasonably good square the e-pawn is solidly defended and on c5 the knight is blocking the action of the rook on c8 so Bolboken aims to reroute it into the game via b6 and um, Fisher continued with his pawn storm, h4, and Bolboken answered in suit with b5. And now Fisher had the idea of exchanging light square bishops in order to emphasize black's weak light squares with bishop h3. So Bolboken traded with bishop takes h3. If instead knight b6, now comes bishop takes b6, queen takes b6 and knight d5 is a very nice shot because there's no bishop takes d5 or black is losing the exchange with bishop takes c8 it's another idea behind Fisher's bishop h3 the move before best play here would go queen d8 because the queen is attacked and has to defend the bishop but now will come knight takes e7 check queen takes e7 queen takes d6 and the d-file pressure is successful in winning a pawn with good chances for the remainder of the game. An alternative for move for black, instead of knight b6 at the start of that variation, after uh, Fisher has just played bishop h3, is rook e8, where we come knight d5 with a big edge to white. The line that Fisher gave goes bishop f8, preserving the bishop, and now h5 with a very strong grip on the position and great pressure on the opponent. Playing bishop takes d5 only worsens the situation and white will be able to break through by playing g6 shortly whilst black remains passive. But anyway, back to the game continuation. So bishop takes h3 is what Bolboken has just played and Fisher answered with rook takes h3. And here Bolboken has little choice but to continue with his plan of knight b6 but thanks to Fisher having traded the light squared bishops he can now play bishop takes b6 
where after queen takes b6 and knight d5, white has a beautiful and strategi strategically winning position with a powerful knight outpost at an ideal square that can never be dislodged, while black has a passive and inactive bishop that's badly restricted by its own pawns. What's more, white's pawn storm is well advanced compared to black's, and it's difficult to come up with a constructive plan for the black pieces. On top of that, Fischer's last move was played with tempo, too, because of the attack on the queen, and the Balkan undeveloped then by returning it to its starting square. D8. Okay, that's the end of part one.